say one thing as well, Terry, on, on what Mike said. Because, because what Mike just said is so true. And this is the issue with, this is the overarching point, right? Some people, and I'm so glad G and Mike are exactly like, whether we disagree on opinions or not, I'm just talking about long-term vision, right? Some people are not thinking of the season just going, like, oh, we beat Brentford, that's it. Some people are thinking about March. You know where I'm, you know where my mind is? My mind is February, March, April, May. That's where my mind is. And I realize that in football, in the world of football, there will be injuries. There will be people who can't be fit. There will be people who have knocks. There will be people, blah, blah, blah. I mean, Curtis Jones was injured for today's game. Like, just as an example. So, none of us here, and I know I'll speak for most Liverpool fans, 99%. No one would be shocked if Jota got injured again or Konate got injured again. And I do agree with Mike. Okay, no problem. Even if you don't want to sign a DM, at least get options of depth. At least get options who can make impact. At least get impact players. Do something because it's nonsensical. And 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 Terry was there when I when I first came became a, a content creator stuff talking, calling out the club and calling out. Listen, have you ever been to Anfield? Go support Man City. You just like to whinge and complain. Jan Molby, who's a Liverpool legend, shall we ask him to go support Man City? Shall we ask him if he's been to Anfield? He's won trophies at Liverpool, and even he's saying we have to sign players. And it's the same with Virgil van Dijk. I don't know if Terry's aware of this. Virgil van Dijk, Alisson, our actual own players are coming out publicly and saying, yeah, we well, need to sign players. So it's a, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. not about being negative. It's just assessing what's going to happen in March. I, I, I think there's a few things at play here. There are some Liverpool fans who subscribe to this notion of, yes, we know there's a problem, but we're not meant to tell anybody. We're meant to, like... Loose lips sink ships. They want it all kept in house. It's, it's imp but that's impossible when your players and your manager are coming out and saying these things. What I would also say, say is this: that I do understand the logic around. I'm really happy with the win, but you almost don't want to get too carried away with it because you know that there's going to be injuries and you know what's coming. And the world would be different if Arsenal and City also had squads where, with two or three injuries, they look thin. Then you're all on a level playing field, and I don't think it would matter would matter as much. In terms of the, the opening couple of games, I want to throw this out to the panel. Which players do you feel have taken to life on the slot in the best way? Who have you been? It may be someone who's continued being great. It may be someone who's starting to look better. Who, who do you feel as Liverpool fans has been a kind of standout player or two in the new slot era so far? Gravenberch has looked. Uh, Gravenberch has looked great in this. Uh, in this, you know, I don't want to call him a six because I don't think he's a six. But in this double pivot, I think he's looked excellent. Um, I think Luis Diaz has looked good the, the first two games. I mean, I know that he missed some chances against Ipswich, but it still doesn't change the fact that he was creating chances and he was making forward runs and he was breaking the lines. Um, I also think Konate looked excellent today. Um, but then again, he also looked great last season. On all, but to, to me, like the biggest one is is Trent, right? Because in this system, through the first two games, he is drifting into midfield, but he's staying on the right side. I know that there were a couple of moments today where he flipped to the left, but I think that was just because of the the nature of the counter attack, and sometimes that happens. But from this right side, the amount of creative balls that he is putting past the defensive line. I mean, in the first half today, he he played a world class ball. To Mohamed Salah, it, almost identical to the one that he did against Ipswich. It was just maybe a foot beyond. And so, if Trent can be in this role where he's able to provide great defensive cover, which he has through these first two games, I mean, watch any counterattack from today. Trent is bombing down the pitch, totally opposite to last season, right? Which is amazing. That's what I want. And also, when you channel him to the right side, that brings out his best creative. Uh, it brings out his, his best creative abilities that we saw back in, you know, 2017, 2018, 2019 that, you know, brought him into that conversation of this guy might be the best right back in the world. And if he can continue to do that, I think he's just going to shine more and more because, you know, he's able to cover all everything that everyone criticized him for. And then he's able to continue doing, you know, his best ability, which is creating opportunities from, you know, world class 60 yard balls. How about yourself, G? No one's really stood out. It's hard, man. It's only it's only <laughs> it's only it's only really been two games. Do you get what I mean? So no one's really stood out, if I'm being honest. Like I think everyone's been you've had some good games here, good games there. I think what might said, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, like Trent probably. I've I've liked what he's done. So Bozalai, I've liked what he's done in the first two games. Um 
yeah, Trent and Zabozza, like maybe, but no one's really like there's not there's not really been a standout performance. I think when we look at the and this isn't to criticize or anything, but I feel like because there's such an onus on this whole six 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 position kind of thing, because everyone's looking at it. Oh, Liverpool went in for Zubamendi and all of this kind of stuff, right? I feel like when we're then watching someone like a Gravenberch in that kind of position, the, for me anyway, that's why I never look at it as, oh, this has been standout from Gravenberch. I just kind of look at it like, yeah, he's doing a, a, a fine job, by the way, and nothing bad about it, but he's just doing a calm job. You know, he's not doing anything that is going to make me believe like, oh, this is an absolutely Rodri-esque type of performances where you're like, oh my goodness, he's taking it to like this mm -hmm. other worldly level. Now, that's not to say he will not get there. I'm not trying to dismiss him. He's been calm, especially in today's game. He was absolutely calm. But I just think that because we're we're so focused on it, yeah, I mean, we're, we're looking at it so hard because we want a six, because obviously we want potentially something potentially different or something better than a Gravenberch. And I think maybe fans, the general consensus is if we see that something better, then you'll start to notice, oh, so this is what Liverpool look like with a better number six. That's actually mm -hmm. crazy, considering how good people think we look now. Imagine, and um, Zubamendi, Edison, whoever, just imagine if you had a better uh, version of this player. Jesus Christ, we'd be looking absolutely crazy. So I think Sam said it there perfectly, man. It's like, I'm not even really thinking about like the now period for me, because at the end no. of the day, Liverpool don't lose that many games anyway in a season. So it's not like we're, I'm going to think, oh, we're going to lose 10 games. No, nah, we lose mm -hmm. about less than five every single season. It's always later on when we get to that February, March period. Do we have the quality in depth? It remains to be seen. Me, I don't think we do, but it, that's more what I'm focused about is when we get to that kind of period, if you don't sign anybody and you continue like this, just like last season, we were winning games. Just like last season, we were top of the league. You know, things were looking great, but then you could see eventually it starts to take its toll because one, you don't have the quality and the type of football that you are playing isn't really sustainable. Now we've got the sustainability part in terms of the football. Have we got the quality? Let's see. Let's see. I, I mean, I, I think the, the, the bigger problem with not investing in new talent is not this season, right? It's like, it's not the result of this season. It's the fact that, yeah. that, that basically that tells the, the, the three players, your three core players who you haven't re-signed yet, that we're not willing to invest in the team at this current moment. So why would that incentivize any of those guys, especially Trent, because Trent mm. is the youngest, Trent is in his prime. Why would that incentivize him to stay at this club? So the bigger worry to me is not even this season. Like, to be honest with you, if we don't sign anyone by the end of this transfer window, like this season is not even in my mind. It now becomes like, do I literally have to just hope that, you know, the, the scouser tax is, is going to keep Trent here? And I know that that's what everyone's going to say. They're going to say, oh, well, he's Liverpool born and bred. Stevie G didn't leave. I'm like, okay, but that's history. And history doesn't always repeat itself, especially when you bring in human emotion into mm -hmm. the equation. So, like, that becomes the big worry to me. What, like, if I were Trent's agent, I'd say, why would you want to stay here? Now, if, if we go on and we're competing, whatever, but that's a huge gamble. That's a massive risk when you don't need to take it. When you've literally just sold, you just got 70 million for Fabio Carvalho and Sepp Vandenberg. I mean, that's absurd. That's absurdly good business that, that we did that. And you turn around and you don't spend a nickel, right? And you basically tell them, I think you guys are good enough, even though you are all telling me that, that you know, you're not, but I'm wrong. I, I'm right. You're wrong. That's it. Like, mm. why would he want to stay here? And th that's no, what concerns me. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and I, listen, uh, I, and, and can I just, and this is not to take it to United. I'm being serious. I'm actually being serious. <laughs> Terry knows when I'm joking, when I'm being serious. He even, like, he looks at someone like a Rashford around him, let's say, okay? Remember when the PSG stuff was happening? And he's probably thinking to his mind, like, what would have happened maybe in Rashford's world if he moved to PSG then? You know, like, what, what and he's looking at, like, people even in the England team, you know, he's looking at Jude and stuff, because him and Jude are close. Like, he's looking at Jude being nominated for a Ballon d'Or, spoken about as the best of the best, you know? And, and, I under, and Mike is 100% right. People need to understand something. Just obviously, we want all all football players to be loyal to us. Every single one of us here, regardless of your support, want your player to be loyal to you one hundred percent and all this. But we must also exist in the reality. Look at it from Trent. Even more, I would include Virgil and Allison's perspective. That's why Virgil and Allison as well have been vocal. They are world class players. Some of the best players in their position in the in world yes. football. 
And they're just looking around and there's like no one coming in, no one to support, no nothing lo- to look forward to. And they themselves, you, you think you think Trent, Mo, Allison, and these guys aren't speaking like what I'm speaking? Do you think the players aren't going well, around going like, why of, of haven't course, we signed anyone? Of course, of course they are. And as much, the thing for fans is, I know not, we, none of us have forever because life is life. But as fans, you have five years to wait. Foot, footballers don't because yeah. they're like, their career is 10 to 15 years. I get it. And... Look, listen, a few people in the comments saying you guys are being too negative. We just won. Can't we talk about that? I mean, we have spoken about the win we and the, great good, today. the good parts on the show. But I also understand it. Like, I'm, I'm, I didn't think about the longer term situation because I just watched this today as a, as a Man United fan. And I'm pissed off that Liverpool looks so comfortable. I'm annoyed that Liverpool looks so good. But I also see it from your perspective where you're like, it is really good. But this feeling isn't going to last because... Oh, will it be good in March? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you, know, you know what it is, Terry, yeah? yeah. You, you, like, you see from a Liverpool... And I guess you're not going to understand unless you're a Liverpool, Arsenal or a City fan. You see the fine margins at the top. It's only yeah. a few... Obviously, we finished, what was it? Seven to nine or whatever it is. It behind, was behind... Nine. Um, uh, nine, behind Manchester City, right? So, you, you, like, and Arsenal finished, what, like two points behind um, City. Like, bro, these margins are so small. Like, I get it when you, like, and no disrespect, but you Chelsea, United, Newcastle Spurs, you're, mm. you're kind of down there. So, you, like, for you guys, when you get the wins and victories, it's almost like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Whereas we know, like, it, like we will always know when we, we've watched our team for the last, like, however yeah. many years, we know the difference. Like, we've played good. We've had an 18-19 season, finishing on 90 plus points and still did not win the league. Yeah. So when we watch these kind of performances, it's not about being negative or positive or anything like that. It's just more about we're always trying to figure out like, bro, can we be that little bit better? Because we've been good and still not won the and, league. And the better so we're is trying just, to find yeah. small margins. No, I hear you. Um,